Welcome to another one of our exciting micro learning modules. In this case, we'll be demonstrating the new skill set of double sequential defibrillation. For the purposes of this scenario, we have our simulation mannequin who presented in an out of hospital cardiac arrest. BLS was first on scene and using their AED, they administered three shocks. ALS subsequently arrived established IV access, gave their co-dose epinephrine, as well as a dose of their antiarrhythmic, whether that be amiodarone or lidocaine. And during that time period, two additional shocks were administered for a total of five shocks. So briefly, let's discuss the indications for double sequential defibrillation, which are five total shocks, administration of epinephrine, as well as administration of our antiarrhythmic. Number two, let's also describe the concept of refractory VF, which means despite continued shocks, our patient remains in a disorganized rhythm of ventricular fibrillation. Now, theoretically, what we're going to attempt to do is shock with two devices in a near simultaneous fashion, as close as we can get to shocking together at the same time. Now, theoretically, this has several potential physiological advantages which include increasing the number of vectors to the myocardium. So the number of vectors of electricity that are directed towards the heart are increasing because we have a pad in an anterior lateral position, which is gonna be their most common, and the second set of pads are going to be placed in an anterior posterior position. Another potential advantage of double sequential defibrillation in the setting of refractory VF is we're increasing the dose of electricity that's provided to the myocardium itself. In pediatrics, there's a dose of defibrillation energy. In adults, we almost always use the same dose. So we need to continue to explore that further. Thirdly, by pressing the button at near simultaneous times, what we're doing is increasing our defibrillation threshold, which increases our likelihood of converting our patient to an organizing rhythm. We're gonna launch into a brief demonstration of pad placement as well as double sequential defibrillation, but there are a few caveats that we wanted to mention. Number one, we have to remember that this is a medical control option, which means you have to call your doc and get approval for this procedure and skill. Number two, the most common scenario is we will have one AED and one defibrillator. This scenario has some limitations because some AEDs don't allow you to perform chest compressions while the device is analyzing. In systems that are performing high performance CPR, we would typically pre-charge the defibrillator approaching our rhythm check and then be able to administer a shock if a shock is advised. In the setting of having an AED and a defibrillator, you may not be able to do that. If perchance you have a system where you may have access to two defibrillators, you would be able to perform high performance CPR, continue chest compressions, clear the patient, have your devices pre-charged, and then shock near simultaneously. Now, I'd like to invite our New York State paramedics, Mike, Susie, and Tyler, for a brief demonstration on double sequential defibrillation. So our patient is intubated, we're bagging. Mike is performing high performance CPR at a rate of 110 beats per minute. Now, as we approach our next rhythm check, in an organized fashion with a team approach, we're going to log roll that patient. I'm gonna secure the patient's neck. Tyler's going to make sure that the endotracheal tube and the BVM stay in place. Susie's going to log roll the patient and then lastly, Mike is going to place the posterior plaid on the patient's left scapula. So we're approaching our rhythm check on three, two, one. Pad is placed and we're back on the ground okay, in three, down. two, one. Susie immediately reinitiates high performance CPR and Mike is able to place the second defibrillator pad in an anterior position. Don't touch patient, analyzing. So we continue for another two minutes of cardiac arrest, chest Don't compressions. Touch patient, and at analyzing. our next rhythm check, we allow our AED to analyze the rhythm. 
and we pre-charge our defibrillator. Don't touch patient. Press flashing shock button. Don't touch patient. Press flashing shock button. Now, in a near simultaneous patient, uh, after Don't clearing the patient, patient, we're going to deliver shock our shock. Delivered. Start CPR. And immediately reinitiate high quality CPR. <laughs>